All right, what is going on everyone and welcome to a special video. So I'm not exactly sure how to do this video, but the goal, I said I'd make a video on how I got my Carrick. I'm not gonna go into the details of like what you need to get, but I'm gonna give you guys some tips and stuff that I learned throughout my time. I know getting the Carrick is easier now than it was before, but just in general, like some tips that might make it speedier for you and things you can look out for and things you can prep in advance before getting your Carrick. Um, so I know bartering may not be the most interesting thing. Some of you guys just kind of want the Carrick and just to say you have it. I mean, that's a huge accomplishment, no doubt. And um, so, yeah, over time, I'm just going to show you like what I did and some tips and tricks that you guys can uh, start prepping in advance. That'll help you. So before we do that, um, we're gonna be doing this live. I don't really know exactly how to do it. And I know there are like guides out there that could that explain everything. But if you just want like some extra stuff, I'll let you guys know. Um, before we do anything, I'm just gonna set my auto path to, uh, we're gonna do a Hakobin run real quick before I get started. Let's make sure I have everything good. And yeah, we're almost at plus 10 everything. And then we're probably gonna work on blue gear. So, first of all, I would say know what kind of Carrick you want in advance. Do you do you have a sailboat? Are you going to Caraval route or are you going to Gallius? Um, so this is something you should probably know before going into it. Like, basically, did you have a sailboat or do you have a frigate? And then once you get to frigate, you go Gallius or Caraval. And then after that, you branch off into... Um, a Volante and Valor for the Gallius side and Advanced or Balanced. I personally chose the Valor for me because I wanted the PvP boat and um, doing sailing dailies for me was uh, something that was kind of tedious and it took a while. So I chose the Valor because I wanted, you know, just try PvP, uh, boat PvP and all that stuff. And the cannon speed reload was a little bit faster. So, that was my choice, but honestly, they're all like pretty solid choices either way. Anyway, hold on, let me get the auto path going. So, tips and tricks that I would give you guys is one, when you're bartering, if you are under 3,000 barters, um, you will not be seeing brilliance in your material refreshes. That's like 3,000 exactly is when you start seeing um, brilliance, which is the pearl shard and rock salts, and those are the things you're gonna probably be working on to last, and then everything else. So, why is my boat going in such a weird angle? Whatever. Anyway, what the heck? Hold up. Whatever. Let's just let it auto path. So, one thing you want to do early on is. Let me just go over this quickly first. Ilya Island should be your hub for all your bartering materials. We'll get into that a little bit later. So um, we'll get into the materials you actually need. So I use Ilya for bartering. And I use Port Neferia for boat part materials and stuff for your dailies. So first things first, what I would do is... It's about 12 CP, I believe. And you're going to need to get 12 CP anyway, regardless. So know what you're going for first. It'll help you look like less burnout. Hold on, I hear music. Hope I didn't get stopped. All right, well, we're good. All right, anyway. So you're going to be going for blue parts anyway, right? So whether you get Caraval or Gallius. Now, there's always going to be one part that you're going to be bottlenecked on. It's most likely going to be the artifacts. And for this one, so I'll explain how to get every single material uh, without buying them with sequins, because I would probably not recommend buying uh, any material with sequins. I made that mistake. I bought a few things, but realistically, it's just time gated. So for the most part, what you're gonna want to do is just get them on dailies, and if you're missing like one or two pieces, that's okay to buy them straight up for your coins. But uh, 
Overall, though, just work on it slowly. What is it? Dude, the auto path, I swear, is like the weirdest thing. Um, so yeah, one thing I would recommend is keep a character at Ilya Island. Or not Ilya. Well, Ilya, I guess, works too, but uh, Achilles Eye, that is where you're going to be doing all your sailing dailies. Um, so if you're bartering and doing that, I don't know. Like, one thing I did was... I left a character at Aquila, and then one of my guildies just does sailing dailies, and you can ride with them. So as long as you're in like a party or a platoon, and you're on the boat with them, you get credit for the dailies. Or if you want to do them yourself, obviously you just go out and do them yourself. And um, the order that I got my boat parts from, or for, I'm going to go with Gallius because that was the way I did it. Uh, Caravel is a little bit less material, so that's always better. Um, so I've got my prow first, and then the cannon, then the sail, and the plating last. That was just how it happened to turn out and the way I got my materials. So let's look at the prow for a second. Uh, let me hold on. Let me, let me make sure I don't screw anything up. So we'll go over every single material. And I'll show you how or where I got it. The ruddy mangan manganese nodule. Jeez, that's such a weird word to say. That one and the seaweed stalk are the ones or the dailies you get from Aquila's eye. Uh, you talk to that otter thingy near where Khan spawns, and then you just turn in like a. Uh, let me just show you real quick what it'd be. So this is my character at Aquila. So, if you look at your inventory, the iridescent coral pieces and your coral pieces, you can find them on the island. Um, I could show you that a little bit later. But, um, turn those in. You get two of those nodule things and four seaweed stalks per day. And it's just you calculate how much you need. I think you need a total of 250 for all the boat parts. And, um,. You get them over time. Hold on, let me get this barter done real quick. Gotta pay attention for this, and then we can be on our way. This auto path, dude. God, I don't trust it. This is actually one of the most wonky auto paths I think I've ever seen. Alright, anyway, let's back to the thing. Should be good for a minute. So, as we just explained for the prow, the seaweed stalks, nodules, uh, just turn those in daily. Literally zero effort, just get the corals. And the Enhanced Island Tree-Coated Plywood and Great Ocean Dark Iron. The Dark Iron is probably going to be your first bottleneck. I just want to point out, through time, you should be collecting materials for all of them. Um, but I would honestly focus on one piece at a time, because that just makes things easier. So the Enhanced Island Tree-Coated Plywood. Um, there are two quests on Achilles Eye where you talk to the NPCs. And one is do five barters a day, which, I mean, straightforward, easy. And then the second quest is do ten barters a day. Um, so the five barter one will give you um, a choice of three items. The... Hold on, can I just show you my Port of Furia storage? So the five barter a day will give you an option of eight glue... Eight reef pieces or two pure pearl crystals. Um, for the Gallius route, or the yeah, if you're on the Gallius, you're going to need pure pearl crystals and reef pieces. So obviously, you just get that over time. And um, to ten barters, you can get ten enhanced island tree coated plywoods a day. 
So that's like 30 days, assuming you aren't buying anything. But there are ways to get multiple of that one. And it's by doing the material refreshes. And when you do that one... So every day, you get 150 points, right? So like 150 farter refreshes. That means you can do two material refreshes and two trade item refreshes. Well, it's limited to two of them. So no matter how you spend your points, two of them max. And then two of these. Or you could do four trade item refreshes. But if you're like just hard pushing your Carrick, um, you're probably going to want to do two material refreshes. It literally just cuts down to days total you're going to need. So I would highly recommend doing it. Less money, but your goal is for the Carrick, right? Okay, so. And um, the material refreshes will pretty much give you everything you need. But it's obviously time gated. So that's where you're going to be getting your uh great ocean dark irons i think that's the only way to get them through the material refreshes or waiting through to get lucky through uh the regular trade so if i remember correctly you get about four four to eight great ocean dark irons a day assuming you get like two and two like two different uh barters per refresh so like if you if you're lucky you'll get eight of them and if you're unlucky you'll get four of them per day so 150 divided by four is how many days you'll need so we just went over all of the uh prow parts and over time you should be collecting them as well so next i got the sale a uh, ruddy nodules i swear i still don't know how to say that word but nodules um same way you get those are we okay i didn't hear any sailing going on so i was like wait did we get to the next point oh god we just get stuck no, we're good. hold on i gotta wait till it auto paths all right we're good all right next part sorry we're getting kind of like distracted i didn't think it'd be that much work so the artifacts the cox pirate artifacts there's three different kinds a beginner a blue one and a red one i'm just gonna call them red blue and green let's just make it easier um so all the artifacts were the ones that were like bottlenecks for me and so there's some things that you should start picking up like as soon as possible and they probably won't be a bottleneck for you and um, so for the sale, the seaweed stalks, nodules, I just explained how to get them. It's time gated. Do your dailies every day. You'll be done. Um, so artifacts and luminous cobalt ingots. The cobalt ingots are acquired through bartering only. So you get one per material refresh. It's pretty much guaranteed. Like when I did it, it was pretty much 100%. You get one per refresh, so you can get two a day, assuming you do two refreshes a day. That's just straight up 15 days if you do it every day. That's it. Um, the artifacts, the blue artifact, that is, I think you can get up to two per refresh or four per day. And um, I swear I just heard something weird. That was like the ogre thing. Um, so... The 30 artifacts, you can also get the 10 barters. You have an option to get either the 10 pl tree plywood. You can also get these through um, material refresh a day, like I think 20 a day. So it just adds another like one to your set. So whatever you're going for, just get that one. So the 10 barter refresh either gives you one blue artifact or 10 plywood and just honestly get what you're working on so you could probably get five blue artifacts per day or about like 50 plywood a day assuming you're doing two materials and your dailies next is so let's say let me just give you an estimate it's probably about 15 to 20 days per part if you are not going if you're not buying them with sea coins so this one at very minimum will be 15 days for the ingots okay 
I just heard something weird, so the music just changed. So now we're going to our third part. Um, so don't worry if you're going for Caravel as well. It's the same pieces, just less of them. So next piece I went for was the cannon. The tide dyed timber squares, moon scale plywood, bright reef pieces, and yellow artifacts. Now the yellow artifacts are actually going to be the biggest bottleneck because you need a lot of them. So when you do the ocean or Achilles eye dailies, what you have to do is kill two baby sea monsters, a Hecaru, Ocean Stalker, um, Black Rust, Nine Shark, and Candidum. You do all those and then you get it. So every day you get three tide dyed timber squares, three yellow ones to get your Gallius upgrade, and three yellow artifacts. And then the regular, um, you get a tier of the ocean and moon scale plywood and moon and uh, some other piece that you need. I like moon vein fabric. So, if you do the Achilles Eye dailies, you get three timber squares and ten plywood scales a day. So, assuming you aren't buying anything, you probably get... It's about 30 days for this. And, uh... It's 60 for the timber squares. But, um... I think you get two to four uh, tide-dyed timber squares a day from refreshes. So let's say you're getting about 7 to 10 a day times 30. And if you need like 180, that's like, yeah, average around like 18 to 20 days as expected. So basically to get those, basically TLDR, just do material refreshes every day and then you get all the parts. But... Um, the Cox Pirate, the yellow artifacts, you get three of those from the dailies, same with Moonscale Plywood. Um, the Plywood, I would not recommend bartering for. If you can, if you have a guild that does con, you get con scales and, hold on, let me, uh, go here. So this is what it looks like. You also get one of these and ten or three of these, I think, a day from the dailies. So if you kill con with your guild, you can melt, I think you get about six to ten of them tendons and then you can melt that down for moonbane fabric and then you could also like get these from drying so you get plywood or what is it yeah drying for the fabric drying fabric jesus dude turns into that and then you could also get the plywood so you honestly get a lot of these. I had, like, significantly more than I actually needed by the end of it. So that was one thing. And that's how you get all your other parts. So let's go to part number four. Our plating. This is the one we got last. As I said, the five barter daily is um, how you're going to get your pure pearl crystals. I would not recommend buying it. And do material bartering is how you're going to get your beginner artifacts. Um, you probably get like two per. So like it's about like 15 days total. And then red artifacts, moon scale plywoods. The plywoods are just straight up easy to get. And yellow artifacts are what you're going to be working on. So after you get all your parts in there, you're going to need to do tier of the oceans. Um... And then Brilliance, and then the Tide Dyed Timber Squares, which I are these, the yellow ones. There's blue and yellow. The yellow ones are going to be used for, like, once you have everything, you use it to upgrade to the Carrick, not a boat part. Same with these. You get one a day, and you need 42 of them. You just do dailies, 42 days in a row, and it's easy. It's actually kind of tedious, actually, because you have to kill a Black Rust. 42 times to get it or you could just buy it but it's not worth it in sea coins that uh tier of the ocean is worth uh 3900 coins however there are days or there are ways to speed up your thing so you see these um akila coins right here so no matter what daily you do let's say you get three yellow artifacts right 
Um, if you get 150 coins, you could turn it into the NPC over there. <clears throat> and then you could get, he gives you like double. So like if you get one tier of the ocean, you get that one. So we're at Hakuman. Let me just go swap to my tamer real quick and show you where all the NPCs are. So you can get a general idea of where to pick up the quests and how to do them. And I'll just do a little quick route of how to get the corals. So this should be fairly easy and straightforward. I don't know if this channel is taken already, but I'll show you uh, how to do everything as well. This is just an easy route. There are other ones. Oh snap, Khan is going on here. Let me switch channels. Yeah, we, we saw the notification too. Let me just switch channels real quick. Because I'm going to show you the route and literally Khan is going on right now. I'm just going to get blasted. Okay, so... This wharf manager right here, he is the guy you talk to to get your five barter quests daily. And then the soldier right here is where you pick up your first set of dailies to kill the Hecaru, Ocean Stalker, and the baby sea monsters. Once you turn in those quests, you get a second set, you go to the wharf manager again. And then he gives you your second set where you have to kill a nine shark, Candidum, and Black Rust. And those will be your dailies. So after you turn in your five barters, that's a separate quest entirely, um, a new one will unlock over here. And you talk to this dude. It's kind of hard to, you won't notice unless you actually talk to him. So this soldier right here, this dude, uh, I already did mine for today, so I can't particularly show you it. Um, here's the one. He'll give you your 10 barter. And once you get your 10 barter, how you get it. And once you get 150 Akila coins, you talk to this old moon commander, and he basically just gives you free materials for your Carrick. So there are a few places down in the ocean. There's like an underwater ruins. Um, but don't worry about that one too much. I'll just show you the route I used and just check it at your own time. So every day to get your nodules and sea thingies, like I forgot what they're called, like you're gonna basically need the coral pieces and iridescent coral. So you need one of these and 10 coral pieces every day. You talk to this dude, he'll give you two quests and then that's where you get your seaweed stalks and the nodules. So how do you get the coral pieces, you might be wondering. Um, well, you see the dead coral pieces, you just gather those. So you might be wondering, where do you get the iridescent coral pieces? And basically you go down here, you see these like coral thingies. I'll show you exactly the route I used. And since I don't really need them anymore, I don't mind sharing them with you. So they're probably taken by now. I just, I might've just picked a bad channel, but there are two here. You see the red and purple, or not red, purple and green. Um, those will potentially give them. So you can get like one to three of them per. And if you like really need them that badly or you're in like some sh shortage, uh, just like swap channels every like 20 minutes or something, 15. And find a channel that's not dead. The next spot is down here. The way you can figure it out is this little like coral reef thingy. Kind of weird. So you just go uh, dive down here. Also, you see that purple thing over there. That's one. So this coral, the green thingy, sometimes it has, I think I just, yeah, the trumpet coral, here it is. And then you got your one piece. So you're gonna need a hoe, like a monos one works as well. This one, I'm not really sure if this one gives it, like I know you can uh, gather from this purple thingy. And then one over here, I, I legit just, 
picked a bad channel that doesn't have them. But I think you can get up to like three to four pieces in this spot and then this purple one over here. Yeah, dude, I just picked a bad channel. Unlucky. So that should be like three of them. spot before we go back on to our main and uh, I'll explain like other tips and tricks to do everything so over here you can get a few if this one is taken I'd be very surprised because I don't like you're kind of going out of your way so in this very spot there should be yeah a trumpet coral this one's usually never taken because why would you go out here and then there's one over here that's usually never taken so at least is one and then another piece over here I'm actually kind of surprised this one's taken to be honest because sometimes it's not but yeah you see basically the corals that look like they're poisonous and you should probably never eat them if you see them in real life but yeah anyway those are the routes that I chose to go through. And uh, if you get a lucky channel, you could probably get like seven pieces and just do it once a week and then you're good to go. Or just stockpile like what I do every now and then to stockpile them and then you're good. I don't even know why I still do them, I guess, because uh, you do get a lot. All of this gathering and sailing XP is literally from doing dailies and turning these in every day. So... The fact that I can make almost artisan sailing just from doing the dailies here and then gathering from just picking corals and turning the quest in, it's pretty impressive, I guess. When I first started, everything was all beginner one. As to the processing, I don't even know why it's beginner 10, to be honest, probably because I was uh, I left in Pelia for a long time, beside the point. But if you go down here, um, there's like underwater ruins down there. I didn't, I don't really go there, just kind of out of the way when I could just do a circle around the little small island and get them like every 20 minutes. So yeah, that was the route that I used. That, those are where you pick up all the other dailies. There's some like fishing quests far down. So if you like were here, if you go down to island somewhere around there, there's some sort of like dumb fishing quest. I'd never bother to do it. So another thing I would recommend is leaving a character on Lima Island. I never really had one until I was close to the Carrick. So here's Lima Island. The reason why you want a character there is because there's an NPC that sells you like the parts. I recommended not buying um, like materials until you're really close and you're just like one or two off and it's just like, oh, I want it today instead of tomorrow kind of thing. So I would, that's the only reason why, or I'd leave a character there and buy it. Plus, if you are upgrading boat parts, um, Rabinia, she is the person you talk to to basically buy everything. All the parts you ever need, everything right here. And uh, the reason why I still have it here is because I still buy these things. Don't worry about these. Um... You'll need them once you get your blue uh, Gallius Caravel parts and even Carrick. You need these, so this is why I leave a character here so I can just buy them. And uh, don't worry about all of these. These are Carrick stuff. And then um, the only things I would say are worth buying only if you are very close are the Brilliance because you need a lot of barters to actually unlock them. But everything else, I don't think they're worth it um so if you're gonna spend your c coins on any parts i would the only things are probably the pearl or brilliance uh never buy the tier of the oceans never buy con just 
go merc for a guild at the worst case scenario where you don't have a guild or you don't have friends. So just go like ask in zone chat or something, the sailing whatever. I'm pretty sure there's like a sailing discord where someone runs it and just join that discord and then you can get one a day. Or if you could go merc for con, never buy those six. That's a lot of coins actually. So yeah, everything you can get fairly easily. Um, the only things I'd recommend buying, if you were to spend it, are the brilliance. Uh, otherwise, just use your coins on the materials because you need these to enhance your gear, whether it's green or blue. And that's really it. Don't worry about the bottom. That's for Carrick. And these are for just like people who want money. Uh, chances of you ever getting an Ebon Ruth Knoll is probably less than 1% of players. I think there's like, what, five in the whole entire NA. Um, Khan's Concentrated Magic. Don't waste your coins on that one. You could buy it off the market already made and just make the cons heart. Just buy it. Seven and a half billion. Um, I actually did the calculations and you can probably do it too. So each monos things is about like 200 mil after taxes. And it for the most part equals out to the cons. So whether you're selling monos accessories or just saving for a concentrated magic, it's probably the equal price. So that's what you want to do. As for these, kind of irrelevant. Don't worry about them. So yeah, that's what the shop is for. So now that I showed you like how to get every blue part, a TLDR, do material refreshes, do your dailies. It's like 15 days apart. And then as you collect all the materials, like you should be collecting them all at the same time. There's obviously going to be a bottleneck for you. Um, just work on those and then you're not going to be spending like 60 days just to get all parts. I mean, you could, there's a possibility, but like, as you get to materials, like you work on one piece at a time, each one, let's say from zero to blue part, about 15 to 20 days. But if you're collecting all the materials at the same time, then you should probably get them like one after the other and all of them. Let's just say one month, and you should probably have all four of them. Most likely. I don't know for sure. It really just depends on how much you play the game. Now, some other tips I can give you when you are bartering. I understand. Like, I felt this way too. Bartering is not the most fun activity in the game. It is something you have to do because it's either money or you need the materials. So... For you guys working on a Carrick, I'd recommend doing two of these a day. Never do the instant refreshes because it limits, it like cuts down the number of things you can do. So if you do actually play enough, like it's once every four hours you can pick something new. Um, I would say material refreshes, assuming you are you have a goal and you have you know what you want to get, so you're not just like aimlessly bartering, right? Um, doing a material refresh should take you between 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, that also depends on your boat speed and, like, everything. So if you're just trying to, like, min-max it, it should be 30 minutes to an hour, assuming you know what you want and that's all you're getting. You're not bartering for anything extra. Uh, that should be, like, one hour up to four hours, and then you go do something else for the next three hours. Now, trade item refreshes are a little bit different. It could take you between one hour to all four hours depending on what you're doing so for in my case i do four trade refreshes every day it's because it's all i need so for example i'll show you what i have on my route right so you can check this my goal right now is to pretty much just get as many c coins as possible for the number of routes i have open so what i do every refresh is let's let's say Ilya is your central hub point that's where you're starting now, what I want to do is go to the Hakovin route every day. So this is like the beginner route. And this is how you get some coins without having to go into the ocean. So I, you could do this on your Gallius or Caravel. Um, you won't be fighting anything. It's just one is the longer route than the other. Um, so on average, 
the Hakobin roll could be between 1 C coin to 600 coins. Obviously, 123 is not good, but I need the coins, so that's why I'm doing it. Um, and then you pick up all four barters here. And then I also have a map in my Discord if you guys want to uh, check it out. Where I could show you all the Margoria routes and I labeled everything. So, another thing I would start early. I should have mentioned this earlier. But if you are planning on going for a Carrick eventually. You're... So, I'll show you this now. And this is something that might be far out. But it's good to start early. So, you're going to want the blueprints. You need 10 blueprints for everything, right? And then to get the sunset materials is for um, enhancing blue carrot gear, right? So the solar and lunar stones you buy with sequins irrelevant. However, the hard thing to get is the starlight powder. And the way you get that is by... Do you see these nodes right here? Um, one here. Uh, Rancid Island or Rasted Island. Uh, Tinbera. Lero Island. So what you have here is an excavation node. They give you the blueprint and starlight powder. So there's four nodes total. Um, yeah, and Alnaha Island. One. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit. One, two, three, four. You want all four excavation nodes. And you could connect it to Ilya Island. Um, but just a little tip that I did is I would probably connect them to Velia. It is like 1 or 2 CP more. However, you probably already have workers that are like artisan or professional level. Each uh, cycle for these excavation nodes takes about 6 to 8 hours, assuming you have a professional, and then about 8 hours with professional, 6 hours with a artisan goblin. And so, this is where you'll be getting your Starlight Powder and all your uh, blueprints. Once you get 10, that's, the blueprints are kind of irrelevant. Now, the Starlight Powder is something you should probably start picking up early, whether you are just now beginning bartering, or you're like on your way to Carrick. Um, because eventually, you're going to get to a point where, once you have your Carrick, whether it's 2 months later, 5 months later, or a year later... You want the nodes running. So to connect from Velia all the way over here and getting every excavation node is about 22 CP. I know that's a lot, but I mean, if your goal is mostly just boat, you're going to want it. So each node is from is like one point to connect and then three CP per excavation. So that's 12 in excavation. And 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, 21 points, I think. Um, 21 CP to connect from Velia and probably like 20 to connect from Ilya. However, you probably already have workers there at Velia. So it's just easier. That one point is worth it to time. Now, after you get that, just let it run and then you'll get the starlight powders over time and your uh, materials. So after that, on your road to Carrick, as I mentioned, just how you already know how to get all your uh, blue gear parts now, right? Okay, so now some tips for bartering that I did is I used to... Just try to barter aimlessly, and it's it's good to get your count or your barter count up. The way you check it is barter, and then you see the total number of exchanges. After 3,000 is when you get to start seeing the brilliance in material. So I got all 60, well, like probably like 52 of them-ish, within 1,000 barters. Now... After 3,000, you see them in material, and 51, or like 5.1k, is when you start seeing them in trade. Um, so let me just give you a little rundown of what I found out. Nearer to the islands, like to say Velia, 
you will start seeing tier one materials. So let me just go to my Ilya storage and so we can get on the same page. Level one, I'm gonna call them tier one. Uh, green, level two, level three, level four, and level five. So white, green, blue, yellow, orange. So if you just are trying to get your barter count up, the level one exchanges are closer, like the closest to land or your main town. Um, so you see how these are all level one. That's where you'll be getting a lot of your beginning start stuff from. And then I assume your belly of storage is probably full of random garbage just by playing the game before. So this is why we keep our central hub, Ilya Island. And then as you see, level twos are from Ilya and you can get your level two items from here and mostly over here. So basically all the green items over here. Just make a circle around Ilya Island and that's where you'll get level twos. Level threes and fours are mostly in the center area and there are some level fours over here as well. So that's where you'll be getting your level threes and fours. And then the fives are just kind of in like random places. Three, fours, and fives everywhere around the island. Now, I really hated going to Port Eferia and doing barters around here. So I just straight up didn't do it unless they were important. So you'll also find level one toys and like level one barters around here as well, close to the town. And the same with like level twos and threes. Now here's the thing. If you really just wanted to get your barter count up, you would do everything. However, in my case, I did not like doing, going like, so this is my central hub, right? Ilya. I just did everything to like the cutoff point, like right here to halfway. I did not like going to Portiferia. It was not fun and it's just like tedious. So unless it's really important, there's a good chance I'm not going down there. There are other things you have to worry about, such as like wind and um, like if you see thing, you'll you'll probably see that on yours as well. Um, there are maps and guides. I it's hard to explain it without seeing it because um, it's kind of have to pay attention. So yeah, the Sea of Silence is a place you can also go to get some artifacts. And over here is something that I know some people did. I just never bothered. If you leave it an alt or a character on these islands, you can kill the Cox Pirates and um, they can give you extermination seals. And you turn 200 extermination seals into one red artifact. Now, this was the bottleneck for me, so that's what I did. And then in the barters, you can get about 100 and 120. So you're basically getting three from the daily and then maybe like five to seven or like, uh, I don't know. You could get probably about seven a day if you're lucky plus these turn it in. So seven a day, you're gonna need a lot of them. And um, yeah, so for the most part, things I would also worry. So overall, I know we're getting sidetracked, but barter for what you need not just bartering aimlessly that's that way you don't burn yourself as quickly and when you have a goal in mind um that'll make it easier for you guys to like you know stay motivated because i know bartering is really just like a semi afk activity like what i did i went to hakovin and back mostly just explaining this i like left it on an auto path so for a lot of you guys if you have like two monitors or something um, set it on an auto path and check back like every five minutes while you're like, I don't know, playing another game. Um, so that's one thing also, if you're not going to Hakobin and you're just like bartering from point A to B is one trick. So let me show you if you're like bartering for something specific, let's say you have this dried blue rose, you can click the icon right here and it'll take you to the next one. 
So where do you get from one to two? And then you can go backwards as well. So if you click that, you go to two, you get the pirate coins, turn the pirate coins into level three, get the herbs, turn the herb into a level four, level four to level five. And now you have your level five item, right? Cool. Now that you know that, saves time. Great. Ilya storage can be as pay to win as you want it. It's actually on sale right now. That's why I maxed mine out. But if you don't want to pay to win, you could invest in the storage. There's actually a lot. You can like 12. I don't actually know how many total. But let's just say it's a lot of storage if you want to invest a CP into it. What I did personally is I tried to have at least one row of all the tier or level five materials. So when I barter for them, like I don't have to actually go out and do that. So what you really want to keep a lot of is obviously tier four ors, tier threes, and I guess as many tier fours as you want. What I would recommend for a new barter is try to keep at least four. I don't, if you are also limited storage as well, um, try to keep four level fives of each of them, or like, I could say two at very minimum of all the tier fives. I know that's a lot of like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen different tier five materials. Um, if you are limited on space, I would keep two of each at minimum. Um, if assuming like you have to go here, these always, the Hakobin route always takes, uh, level five items. And then if you're doing Margo, wait, what the heck? Hold on a second. Okay. There you go. Let's head back to Ilya Island real quick. All right. So now that you have that. I'm just going to assume everyone... Okay, so let me just calculate this. So if you have level 12... Oh, you should have 12. I don't know how many slots it gives you by default. Uh, 17, 20, 25, another 20... Or 12 is 37, 42, 45, 48... 51, 55. Okay, so let's say it gives you two rows by default. That's, you should have, assuming you put all your CP into it. I'm going to um, calculate this by like the free to play. Let's say you don't want to spend any money on Ilya and you put it in CP. You should have about 70 slots, right? Okay, so there are. 14 different tier fives you should have like two of them two of each in case you want to barter and then luckily everything from tier four and under they do stack which is really nice and um so you kind of want to have at least four of every other tier four or level four and same with like level threes try to have four of everything basically that's uh not tier fives and then you can have two of every tier or level five and try to have four of everything else you get them just over time bartering and um so yeah that'll probably be enough of if you are on like the no spending storage so that's probably good enough that's like 50 slots and then another like 20 that's probably maxing out on a free-to-play bu budget you obviously will not be having all of these but realistically I think if you are willing to buy pearls and investing in the Ilya Island um, that's cool one other thing that you could do is it's kind of tedious but you could also send um, some materials to Encado in our harbor because the reason why we do this and send it to harbor is because you do Hakovin routes every day and I think I bought like, I don't really know, maybe like three line, three rows worth of it. So I think by default you get two, two rows of them. And in case, like I know 
if you don't if you have a Gallius or you're lower, um, you won't have eighteen thousand weight. So when I had my Gallius, I had eight thousand weight, or enough to like do, like I couldn't even do all six of these when I did them. You can only pick up like four of them. Then I'd have to go back and forth. So that was kind of tedious. So that's why when you get your blue boat gear or something you could do early on. It is kind of... It's hard for me to recommend this now because it's kind of easy to get blue. But so like if whether you're going sailboat route or frigate, you could buy some of these and this one gives weight it's kind of irrelevant weight though you're going to want a cannon though straight up i would recommend buying a cannon until you can get a blue one um so basically up until you can get your blue ship part you can make your own pieces but up until you get the blue ones from crafting. Um, actually, these aren't even hard to make at all. What the heck? Yeah, these are easy to make. Yeah, just make your own. It's so easy. Just It's like five dailies and you get a piece. Just, yeah, just make it yourself. And then, so yeah. Then you get the option to go to Port Eferia. Hold on. Let me just stop my boat right here to show you because this is important. I have a character in Port Fair mostly because I'm looking for sailors. It's mostly sailors are end game stuff, and once you have a lot of weight, don't worry about it early on. But um, yeah, hold on as we get there. Treasure seeking, tough. No, we don't want that. So this is the dude where you start doing the dailies from. You take the crates down to the wharf manager, do it twice. But the shop is where you're going to be getting your gear. So... I'm going to already assume you either have the sailboat or the frigate. And I never actually used this green gear. I had like plus six one from the shop before this was even in the game. So this is probably better than the shop one, but I don't know. So once you get your Gallius, this green Gallius gear, and the ones you're making is the blue Gallius gear, which is the ones you want. Uh, I never used a green one, so I can't, like, confirm whether it's good or not. Um, so, yeah, that's... You're gonna need to spend from your frigate or... Frigate or sailboat to your caravel or galleus. You're gonna have to spend either four to 600 mil. It's a huge chunk of money, I know, but that's cheap compared to getting blue gear later on, or blue carrot gear later on. So, also, I would not really recommend getting these. If they're upgrading, I don't even know what this does. Just buy the thing straight up off the market. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have to enhance these to plus 10 to get your blue parts as well. You could use, like, I don't even know. It's, you just... I can't confirm whether these are good or not. I made them specifically just to get the blue gear for the Gallius for me. So up until then, what I did was I went to ship and just bought these and used these. Is it better? I don't know, but it just saved me. Like I didn't want to do it. So that's what you go check over there. Also, yes, you do need plus 10. So yeah, that I think I covered like how to get the gear, what you need, how to get those, how to get the quests, do the dailies, 
Um, how to do the bartering and where the like trade materials are. Okay, so we're almost back to Ilya, so we should pre probably wrap this up. So, one other thing that is probably... This is also locked by the number of barters you have. So, let me just show you real quick. I only have a few routes open. But let's say you wanted all of these five bottom. They're all in Margoria. So, that means you have to go out into the ocean. You can actually watch some of my previous videos where I do that. So, you can get a general idea. Um, so you could probably Google where everything is, but in my discord, I have things labeled. So if you just want to like save a copy or use that for your own reference, why are there so many boats? What the heck? Yo, Pearl Abyss, if you can make these docks bigger, that'd be nice. Also, don't be that guy. When you're not using your boat, check it in. Okay, so as I was getting to, one more thing before we wrap up this video. Also, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments or just ask me on Discord, Twitter, social media, whatever. I'll do my best to answer them. So yeah, under the Durko Island, these are all these like middle ones. They're all Hakobin route. And then anything under Shipwreck Cargo, these are all Margoria, which I'll be doing probably a little bit later. So, from to do the Margoria ones, let's just say your boat is at Achilles Eye. It's over here. The route I go, like, you have to unlock all these, but I have all the barter routes unlocked. So, what you do, assuming this is your start point at Achilles Eye, you go over here, and then I just what i do is mostly just do like a counterclockwise rotation there's a lot of wind and sea current you kind of have to pay attention to but that's like a whole like advanced level stuff that i'll get into in another video maybe like an advanced guide um so yeah i start here go upwards here and then go up then make a turn here this is one of the early ones you unlock come back here take that one next go up Go this one, this one, this is Port Rat, and then go down here, here. You probably, you won't have these unlocked until you have a lot of barters on later on. And then this one. <clears throat> so you end up over in this one. This is where you started. Go up. All right. So one. Uh, you don't have this one unlocked early on. So what I do is one, two, three, four. I don't have this one unlocked. Well, I do, but it's not really like trade. This one, then go down here. This is where you end up, and then you go back to wherever you're going. Uh, so I have these unlocked just because I passed by them. But early on, up until you unlock more trade routes, you won't have this one, this one, this one, this one. This one is like... Mm, these aren't really there. So as you unlock more routes, that's where you get them. So I also know that if you don't have a lot of weight there are some barters where like let's say you you take this into the ocean and it requires like three items and each one you get is a thousand weight uh these are just money you don't use them for anything else so if you get them you just sell it to any vendor 10 mil easy but what you're really going for is the sea coin so that's always one and i think by the time you are ready to go into the ocean, like Margoria, you should probably have at least like eight to 10,000 weight. Now, that should be enough to get at least all of these. Let's make this your priority. If you're going into the ocean, your goal is to get the coins. That's all that matters. Anything else that you can fit weight on to get these like extra 10 mil things, that's cool. But make it your goal to always get the C coins. That is number one priority. And then later on, as you get more weight, 
the extra money you get on their routes. That's cool. So if you want to take a screenshot here. Oh, well, I can't hide UI here. But if you want to take a screenshot, you can. And in my Discord, I have everything labeled. So like what barter route is this one? What is this one? Um, so yeah, just if you want to see that, you can Google it. Join the sailing Discord. Join my Discord. Um, and just that's how you can figure out what they are. So another trick that I can give you guys, this is a, probably a little bit longer. So what you can do, for example, like, let me just show you this. Um, let's say you have something. You could actually put these in your inventory. These are a thousand weight. You could put them in your inventory, right? Okay. So now that we figured that out. I don't, depends on how much inventory you have on your character. Uh, mine is basically maxed out as my main. But if you don't, you could probably have two or three slots. Like, and then once you get your C coins, and then let's say you have two or three trade items in your inventory. What you could do is, let's say you're midway through your uh, barter route. You could go to Port Rat and then just the items that are in your inventory there's a wharf manager here um you could put those items from your inventory onto the boat and then do your second half of the rotation or your route and just finish up there so technically you have like an additional two or three thousand weight except you're carrying it in your inventory instead and you get all your C coins, and then let's say you have the three extra or however many extra barters you have unlocked. Um, you have those done. Go to Port Rat and put them from your inventory onto your boat and just finish the extra thing up. And yeah, there you go. That's how you finish up one rotation. For me personally, it takes me from Achilles Eye to do my uh, barter route in the ocean and then get back. I would just say it takes me about an hour, probably a little bit less actually, because I know what I'm doing. But I would say for you guys, expect to spend one hour from Aquila doing, turning all your things in and then going back. Just estimate an hour. Um, and then obviously you cut down time as you figure out things. Also, you see these icons right here? That's where you trade and barter. It's not actually on the icon if you have a compass. It's a, every like barter route is a little bit under. So like south of the icon, just a little bit. So like right here, right here, a little bit under. Just keep that in mind because it took me a little bit to figure that out as well. So yeah, just keep that in mind and you should be good to go. So what did we cover in this video? where all the trade routes are, like how to get your barters up, what you should be doing, how to get green and blue gear to upgrade, uh, how to not waste time in your entire barter route. And just like literally the best thing I could tell you is make sure to set a goal for yourself and work on like when you're getting materials, I know you should be getting all the materials that you can for all the parts you need, but I would honestly work on one piece at a time. And there's probably going to be some bottlenecks that you have here and there, but that's okay. Make sure to organize your inventories and storages so you don't get confused. So what I did is everything I need for upgrading boat parts, like, well, this is the only place you can upgrade them. So all the parts you need, like, for example, all of these stuff. Keep them in Portaferia. Don't keep them in Ilia Island, especially if you are uh, on limited storage. So, Portaferia, keep anything that would help you upgrade your boat there. And anything that's for bartering exclusive, keep that on Ilia. And if you are free to play or just not spending money on storage inventory slots, um, you could keep that on Ilia. And you could also transport them to Ancado Inner Harbor, and then there's more stuff over here. The reason why we do that is one, obviously, you are on limited space, 
And let's say, like, unlike you guys, what I could do, for example, is, like, this is something I can do because I have the weight. I could just stock up on literally everything and put them in my route and then do two at once. So, let's say I... Let's say my refresh timer was up, right? And I didn't have enough time during the day, and I only wanted to do my Hakobin run, right? So, let's say you have 8,000 weight, and you need four items, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, and then four. Now, when you do your refresh, you could potentially get two and one, so like, you don't have to go to Hakobin for the second refresh. You just get them all done. Your first one, you're going in. You turn in your four that you know what you have guaranteed. And then once you do, once you get to Hakobin and turn that in, uh, do your second route or refresh your second one. And then turn them in and get all four done on your way out. So you're, that's literally saving time. However, sometimes you there's no like you don't know what you need on your way back. That's why Ankado, you can always have some extra supplies over there. So let's say your second route. Um, so for this one, let's say it's a potion and then some other item you don't have. And like you picked the wrong, you got bad RNG, I guess. <laughs> and then you picked the wrong item. Instead of going all the way back to Ilya Island, you can just have some at Ankado. Stop by there on your way back and then pick up the item. Go back to Hakovin. I know it's kind of tedious. And it's going to be like, why? Dang it. I chose the wrong one. Unlucky. But yeah, instead of going to Ilya again, keep some at Ankado in case you mess up and pick the wrong one. And then it literally just saves you time. Especially, um, one thing that I did that something I used to have this mentality is like, oh, I have to go to Hakovin Island again. It's not fun. Why am I doing this? So, usually what I did was I only went to Hakovin when I saw like 300 coins or more. Now, at my stage in the game, coins are important. And uh, I can actually go to Hakovin in like 30 minutes or less now. Whereas before, it would actually be like an entire hour with a slow boat. So, I'd, I'd feel like exhausted. I didn't want to go back again for a second time in the day. So I'd be like, oh, it's only 100 coins, right? I don't care. But, um, so yeah, that, it literally just does make things easier if you have them on a different, in a different storage. Um, you could keep items in Velia as well, but who cares? Ankado and Ilya, I would keep your barter materials. Like, if at very worst, Keep a few tier 5s here and then like all your tier 4s and below. And then in Ankado, I would put only tier 5s here. Just like one of each kind if you can. Mine is just kind of like some sort of scattered mess. But um, yeah, if there's anything, only keep tier 5s in here. And then all your everything else you can put over here. I also thought about like... Getting a second boat, which is obviously you have to have a little bit of extra silver. Get an extra boat and keep it here. Keep an alt here if I see tier 1 barters and keep them in Aferia. But I also didn't really want to buy Aferia storage. So, And I also plan on not buying it unless they do something amazing. So I can keep a character here. Just get the tier 1s. Pick them up. You can actually transport trade items. So, like, if you want to transport, just keep in mind, you can only send up to, like, three items at once. Um, so, like, you can send them wherever you want. However, just keep in mind, you have a 3,000 weight limit, so you can only send three items. Um, so, yeah, that's how you would be transporting from Ilya to uh, Ancado or Portiferia to Ilya. So yeah, that's basically the tips I can give you. If you have any specific questions, like about bartering or anything, feel free to let me know. Uh, I'll do my best to answer it. And yeah, so I think that covers a lot of it. I know that was a long hour and 10 minute video. Um, 
but I think I covered a lot of it. So see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching, and have a fantastic day.